Good evening, Bible students. This is chapter 10 of the book of Romans. Uh, as we look at the end of chapter 9, Paul is expressing his burden for his own Jewish people because they were the ones that were originally given the promise of the Messiah. And we noted in the period uh, between the Old Testament and the New Testament, and that's called the intertestamental period, the Jews had been scattered <clears throat> and some may have had a diluted view of their place in the new covenant with God, um, especially after the coming of Christ and after acknowledging that Jesus was the Christ. <clears throat> they are so steeped in their Jewish heritage that some of them may have found it confusing as to how much of the Old Testament should they continue to practice and how much of the the old law should continue to be in their lives to be acceptable to God. Now as I mentioned in chapters 9, 10, and 11, we find Paul referring back to the Old Testament very often because he is here trying to appeal to his Jewish brethren again and remind them that the gospel is not only what he is preaching but it is also in Jewish scripture. So here we start with verse one of chapter 10. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness for everyone that believeth. So let's go back over this uh, passage here. He said, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. And we know that saved means delivered from sin saved from their sins. Jesus said, behold, not Jesus, uh, uh, John, when he saw Jesus said, behold the lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. So he, um, tells them in verse one, it is my heart's desire that his people, Israel may be saved. And he says in verse two that they have a zeal and enthusiasm for God, but it's not, it hasn't been enlightened. It's not according to the correct knowledge. So he acknowledges his people's enthusiasm for God, but he says it's not correct. And he uses a strong word here in verse three. He says, for being ignorant of the righteousness of God, the reason he says that so strongly is because the righteousness of God can't comes through faith in Christ and not the works of the law. And he says they're seeking to establish a way of salvation on their own because they did not submit themselves to the original righteousness of God. So in other words, to explain this, when we don't obey God, then it's hard for us to show, it's hard for God to show us anything further. And so this is what he is explaining has happened to Israel. They have gone about to establish their own righteousness because they did not originally submit to the righteousness of God that God laid out for them in the law. Now he says something very beautiful here and it's very succinct. He said, for Christ in verse four is the end of the law. He is the very purpose of the law. If you remember, Jesus said, I came not to destroy the law, but to fulfill it. And the way we fulfill the law is through the love of Christ. Don't forget that Jesus when he was asked, what is the greatest commandment? He said to love the Lord your God with all your heart is the first. 
and to love your neighbor as yourself. He said, if we do these things, we can't do any more. And so accepting Christ into our heart, it allows us to fulfill the entire law, which is the love of God. Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. So in other words, if we believe in the Christ, in his saving power and his authority and the word of God that, that will establish righteousness to everyone that believes. That means it will justify anyone that believes that Jesus is the Christ. If they believe in his sovereignty, his power to deliver them from sin, then they will be justified. And we find a lot in this chapter, he uses righteousness, the word righteousness, and it can be translated justification because that is the end of salvation. That is the whole goal of salvation is to be forgiven of our sins and justified before God. For Moses, this is verse five, describeth the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. Verse six, but the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise, say not in thine heart who shall ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down from above, or who shall descend into the deep, that is to bring Christ again from the dead. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Now, I had read this many times um, in past years, and uh, it, it would somewhat baffle me what Paul was saying. I, I don't know if it was because it was uh, the King James Version and all that. But as I began to, begin to study this more, um, Paul seems to be here talking about things that are impossible to do, to bring Christ down from heaven um, or to uh, bring Christ up from the dead. These are things that seem miraculous or by our own efforts. He said, but what, but what does it say? That the word is nigh even on your lips or in your mouth. That is uh, the word of faith, which we preach, the message that we preach. Um, so in verse five, he, he calls to mind that Moses wrote that a man who practices the law or practices the righteousness that, that is based on the law shall live by it. Well, we don't want to live by the works of the law. We want to live by faith. And so when he gets down to verse eight, he said, what does it say that the word is near you? So that very thing that you thought you had to obey by works, he said uh, the, that it is the faith which we preach in verse eight. The word is nigh thee even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. So even though a person might feel that if I obey the law of Moses, I will become righteous, um, the, the real answer is in the faith that they preach or that he pre preached. verses nine through 13, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth, the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture says, so here he goes back again to the Old Testament, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed or shall not be embarrassed or disappointed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord 
over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Now remember that to the people that he was talking to, the Jew and the Greek, these were the predominant cultures at the time. Verse 13, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So these predominant cultures that are, that are battling at the time that this is written, the Greek Hellenistic culture as that I talked about in um, chapter nine, and I gave a historical context of these, um, ver these chapters in uh, nine, 10 and 11. Paul says something very significant here in verse 12, when he said there's no difference between the Jew and the Greek. This was the biggest concern uh, to the Jewish brethren at the time. Is, is there a difference between the way the Jews should practice their salvation in Christ and whether the Gentiles should practice another way? And we see this problem in the book of Acts, Acts the 15th chapter, where some brethren had come down and taught the Gentiles that they still had to obey the Jewish law. In other words, they were almost like converts to the Jewish religion just under Christ. Well, Paul had to set them straight that we are all saved by faith. There shall no works of the law ever justify anyone. So he says in verse 12, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, isn't it beautiful to read this in its context, especially verse 14. We use this um, in evangelistic work. We use that uh, just talking to anybody about Christ. But for the most part, we are talking to Gentile people, other Gentile people other people of, of, of different nationalities. And we just say, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. But looking at this in his context is, is so exciting because he is trying to get across to them that there is no difference between you who received the law and were expecting the Messiah and those who never called upon the name of the Lord, never understood about the Messiah, God had enough love to cover both. And so whichever of you call upon the name of the Lord, whoever it is, they shall be saved. Salvation is for all men. How shall, how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. How, but I say, have they not heard? Yes, verily their sound went into all the earth and their words unto the ends of the world. So uh, what Paul is um, bringing out here, verses uh, 14 through 18, um, he is again talking about the, the Jewish people. And how can men be expected to understand the gospel unless it is preached? He brings to mind the Old Testament scripture, how beautiful are the feet of those that bring glad tidings. But he says something very sad in verse 16. They have not all heard the gospel. They all didn't all pay attention to the gospel. For God prophesied that everybody would not believe even if they was preached to, they were preached to, they would not believe the gospel. But he says, faith cometh by hearing and what is heard comes from the preaching, the message of Christ. 
faith comes through the message of Christ. When we're Christians and we give our testimony, that is again, the message of Christ. So spreading the gospel is not just for preachers, but it's also for God's people to spread what God has done for them. So he said, uh, for the scripture says, their voice has gone out into all the ends of the world and the far bounds of the world. Well, the saints went about preaching the word of God. On the day of Pentecost uh, and during that time, the early church, they went out everywhere uh, with, without pastors, without <laughs> leaders uh, who stayed, it may have stayed in Jerusalem or went other places. The saints went back to their uh, respective places and told what God had done for them. So Paul here in these last three verses um, gives a very uh, poignant um, review of the, the state of Israel. He says, verse 19, but I say, did not Israel know? First Moses saith, I will provoke you to jealousy by them that are no people and by a foolish nation, I will anger you. But Isaiah is very bold and saith, I was found of them that sought me not. I was made manifest unto them that asked not after me. But to Israel, he saith, all day long, I have stretched forth my hands unto a disobedient and gainsaying people. What, what a strong blow to the, um, the knowledge of the Jewish people. Um, Paul in these last three verses is actually uh, trying to run through this process with somebody that had the Jewish mindset. He's trying to go through this process, uh, even of what he thought in his own mind. He said, but I say, did not Israel know? He now, here, here he goes from Moses to Isaiah to God. So in verse 19, he says, what Moses said, I will provoke you to jealousy by them which are no people and, have a, and by a foolish nation, I will anger you. So all throughout the Jewish scripture, the Old Testament, Paul is bringing out, first Moses saw what would happen, then Isaiah saw that what would happen, that the Gentiles would be grafted in, that they would come to the message of Jesus Christ. And then finally in verse 21, he says, but he said all day long, God says to Israel, all day long, I have stretched forth my hands unto a disobedient and gainsaying people. Um, this gainsaying mean uh, self-willed and um, contrary, contradicting people that, that argue and, and contradict. And so that is how God uh, viewed Israel. I gave them a chance to come to the gospel, but they kept rejecting um, the knowledge of the Messiah uh, who came in the person of Jesus Christ. Thank you for joining us today at the Sunday Evening Bible Study. Don't forget, read your Bible, pray every day, and you will grow. If you have any questions, you can email me at grsem7 at gmail.com. God bless you is my prayer.